the reason, right? Because the, our calculations want to solve what? After tax cost of that, right? So in a test, in a final test, please pay attention, right? If we want to solve the before tax cost of that, the number will be what? Will be this one, right? Will be the yield to maturity. However, if you see the question asks you to solve what? After tax cost of the debt, right? Then we must what? We must do times one minus what? One minus the tax rate, right? So that's the questions here that right? ask you to solve. I just pay attention to this, you know, this word, right? Either before the tax or after tax, right? You should read the questions, right? With the attention and uh, pay more attention to the details, right? Okay, so next one. Next one is for uh, something maybe we not mentioned too much right, in class. I am happy to, you know, share this one with you. Right? It's called uh, efficient market theory, right? Efficient market theory. So what's the meaning of the efficient market theory? Right? We're assuming what? We're assuming the market is what? Efficient, right? So everything you know will be also shared with the other in matters, right? No one holding the premium information on you. So if the market is, is efficient, right? So all the investors share the same information, right? And also, you know, once the company has anything changed, Right, the news will be released quickly, will be absorbing right, in the market quickly. Everyone will share this information. Right? That's called efficient market. In the efficient market, because the, everyone share the same information, no one can get a abnormal return. Right? What's the meaning of abnormal return? Means you can realize a higher return than the others, right? It's called a uh, abnormal return. Because no one can get abnormal return, right? The stock will trading with a uh, what? Fair price, right? Fair price means the what? Means the price of actively traded stock will be not different from the values you get, right? In a financial model. And what you solve, use the financial fundamentals will be exactly the same as what you say on the market. However, if something you are you are not sure, right? You are not known, right? Then this one is called non-efficient, uh, inefficient market, right? And then you can see someone can realize higher return than the others continuously, right? Because he knows something different from you, right? He knows some inside information maybe, right? Or maybe he can do some technical and the fundamental study right, to say something not as what you see in the market, right? So that's the A. Next one, that is generally least expensive financing tools. Why? Because the tax has what? Tax deductibilities right, of interest payment. So when we solve the cost of that, we must do times what? One minus T. But our stock, our equity financing, right? There's no such benefits. Why this one is different? Because when we solve the EBIT, right? When we solve the net income from the operating income, right? We first need to minus the interest. Then we need to minus what? Tax. So interest are paid before the tax, right? So you can see that's why our cost of debt can enjoy the benefits of what? Tax shielding, right? Tax shield, right? right? Tax shield, right? That's very different from our equity financing, right? Equity financing is more what? More costly than, you know, the debt financing. But what's the problem of the debt financing? The debt financing, you must pay the interest every, what, every year every year or every six months however if you're raising the debt use if you're raising the finance use equity that's no requirement to pay any dividend or any interest right so you can say in the long term right, you have no cash payments for the cost of what equities right but for the beginning right the cost will be higher 
than the cost of what that because this one has no tax shield right next one right as the volumes of the financing increase right the cost of the various type of financing will of course what increasing right because you need more financing right if you you know for example you apply for more loans right from the bank you need to what, charge with a higher interest rate if the cost of fin financing increase that means the cost of capital are what are raising right if you you know try to get more loans right from the bank you need to pay what more cost right your financing costs will be increasing Next ones are calculations for what for what, with the average cost of capital. Right? Let's say the details. Right, the Jack has a uh, construction corporations. Right, and this corporation issue eight thousand bond outstanding, and selling with a uh, par value, the bond with similar characteristic. Right, with the yield eight point five percent. The company also has four million shares of what common stock outstanding. The stock has a beta. 1.1 sells for $40 per share. The US Treasury bill is yielding 4% and market risk premium is 8%. The JAX tax rate is 35%. What is the JAX weighted average cost of capital? Right? WACC, WAC. WAC is equal to the weight of the debt times the cost of debt after tax plus the weight of equities right, times the cost of equity. So let's say the detail for this formula. Right? What is the weight of the debt is not given. Right? Cost of debt is also not given. Right? So let's say let's solve this you know, input. What's the cost of debt? You can see here. Right? Our bond with a similar characteristic right, will yield with what? 8.5 percent right so same risk will also match what similar return right so our cost of debt should be the what should be 8.5 percent before tax and for the cost of equities you can see we have what we have the beta we have the market risk premium so you will use what capm model right risk free rate plus the beta times market risk what premium rm minus rf what's the risk free rate is the treasury bills yield right it's four percent beta is what beta is the 1.1 1. 1 times the market risk premium eight percent so four percent plus eight point Eight percent equal to what? Twelve point eight percent. Right, so that's the cost of equity. In accordance, where well, we also solve what we will solve the weight of the debt and the cost of weight of equity. Right. So before we solve the weight, we must to know the value of the debt, right, and also value of equity. Right. What's the value of debt? You can see there are how many shares of bond outstanding, eighty thousand bond, right? And also the bond is what's the value? So we have the eighty thousand bond outstanding, right? And uh, the bond is selling with what? Par value. Par value is what? One thousand. And so our bond values will be eighty million dollars. Eighty million dollars for equities value. You can see here, right? There are how many shares of common stock outstanding? There are four million shares of common stock outstanding. The stock value per share is forty. So forty dollars per share times there are four million shares outstanding. So we have one sixty million dollars what stock so what's the weight of that will be 80 over total value right you adding 80 plus 
160 will be what? 240, right? So 1 over 3. So weight of FT will be what? 1 over uh, 1. So will be 1 minus 1 over 3, right? Or you can use 160 over 240, right? Will be 2 over 3. You can either use the you know the ratio, use the fraction, or you can use what? You can use the you know, percentage or decimals, right? It's okay. So now let's put all these numbers right into our what? Into our WAC formulas, right? Use the weight of that times the cost of that. So we have the one over three as the weight of that, right? Times the cost of that, 8.5%, right? And don't forget to times what? One minus the tax rate, right? Tax rate is 35%, right? So we times one minus 35%, right? So we can see here. So times one minus 35%. Then we plus weight of equities, right? Weight of equity is a two over three, right? One, one minus one over three will be two over three, right? So two over three, right? Times the cost of equity, we already solved, right? 12.8%. So that's our formula, right? You put into the web, right? To solve, for, to solve the cost of capital for the whole firm, right? Now let's finish the calculations. Right? You can use your calculators right at home right, to do these calculations. So we have the you know <laughs> one over three right times zero point zero eight eight five times zero point sixty five plus two over three times zero point zero one two eight right so that's equal to what zero point one zero thirty eight right equal to a ten point thirty eight percent right so that's the answer so for these questions you can say right, you can see our problems but has the different part so why you have these such questions with so many informations right so don't get nervous right just write our work formula first right then try to figure out what's the value for each input in this formula right then after you put numbers into this formula you can solve our cost of equity afterward right with the different part you already input so that's the cost of equity cost of debt right weight of debt weight of equity finally will be what average cost of capital for the whole firm right so please write this question down right this question is very typical in this chapter right with so many comprehensive informations right? so you can use this question to review you can capture you know many different calculations in this problem professor can i ask you the question just to make sure before yeah. you go mm -hmm. yeah, so sure. what uh, could you remind me why is it the we mm -hmm. uh, was two over three sure we is uh, Weight of equities, but equities value is 160, right? Over mm -hmm. total value of the capital is 240, right? So that's the two over three. Oh, yeah. And also, you see the weight of debt plus weight of equities must equal to what? Equal to one, right? Because they are totally equal to 100%, right? So mm -hmm. weight of equity can also stop use the one minus cost or weight of the debt. So that's yeah. also equal to the two over sweet yeah sorry my bad thank you oh, that's, so much yeah, you're welcome explanation. okay so let's move to the uh, question 10. so in the question 10 we will solve the cost of what paper stock so what is the paper stock right paper stock is a perpetuities by perpetuities that means student will be paid permanently so every period you will receive a fixed dividend that's five dollars each and our you know preferred stock are selling forward one zero eight dollars so our preferred stock cost will be the five dollars dividend over one zero eight dollars right so you can solve what you can solve the cost of preferred stock Right, so that's equal to what? 
4.63%, right? Because this one is equal to 0 0.0463, right? That's the formula for the word prefer stock, right? Do you have any questions for this assignment? So please let me know. Well, that's the assignment for our word, for our chapter 14, right? The cost of the capital, or you can say weighted average cost of capital, WAG. Formulas, right? This formula is very important in these chapters. And these chapters actually also cover right, the formulas right, in the previous chapters for the bond and stock and preferred stock. Right? Now we're putting them together right, into one comprehensive right, formula called a uh, WAC, right, WAC formulas. So let's follow this assignment. Right? So let me also give you some questions. Right? So before the class, you know, last night, right, I received a questions from one student, right, asking for the uh, some questions in a slides, right. So let me share these questions with you. So let me share the PowerPoint here. Right? Okay, so that's the questions the students have, right? Given the cost of the common stock. 18%. Dividend are $1.5 per share. The price of the stock is 12.5 per share. What is the annual growth rate of what? Dividends. So this is actually the question right, from the homework. Right? So let me show this question again. Right? If you had to solve this one well, right? So this second time, right, we do the question here, right? So you can say, if you saw this question, right, what you will do? If you are not sure, right, which what you will start, right? Let me tell you how to start, right? You can see here, right? You see the cost of the stock, right? And you see what you see dividend, and also you see a growth rate. So most likely you will use what? Dividend growth model, right? Dividend growth model. And in dividend growth model, how to solve the cost of the common stock? R E equal to what? D1 over P0 plus what? G plus the G. And be careful. While you apply this formula, you need to figure out a right, dividend will be next period. I'll just pay. You can see here dividend. You can see the word, right? $1.5 should be here, should be now, right? So not the future dividends, right? So that will be the D0, not D1. So we want to expand in D1, use what? D0 times one plus G over P0 plus G, right? So now let's put the numbers, right? In the questions into these equations, right? Here we have the cost of the common stock, what? 18%, so we have the 0.18. And you can see dividend is what? $1.5 per share. So 1.5. What's the price? Price is a 12 point what? Five. So you see one equations, right? One unknown variables, right? So it means you can solve this one exactly, right? So let's solve this one together. To solve these equations, right? Because we have a, what? We have a, denominator, right? It is a fraction, right? So we must to cancel this denominator by times this number for both sides. Right? So you have what you have the 0 0.18 right? times what 12.5 equal to 1.5 times 1 plus g then plus what 12.5 times g right basically we times the 12.5 for both side, right? Both side. We cancel these denominators, right? After we do this step, right? Next, we will, you know, put the g on one side, right? To solve this g independently, right? So first, we will use the 0 0.18 times what? 0 0.18 times 12.5 equal to the two point what? Two five, right? And this one, you see, 
adjust in a bracket, right? So we we need to you know times the both factors in a bracket by this 1.5 by use distributive law. So we have the 1.5 times one equal to 1.5 times a plus what plus 1.5 what g, then plus what 12.5 g, right? And these two has the common factors, so they can be what co combined, right? So that's the 14 g, right? And this one can be moved to the left hand side, right? So 2.25 minus 1.5. So 2.25 minus 1.5 equal to what? Equal to what? 0. Point what? 0. 0.75, right? Equal to what? 14 G, right? So G is equal to a 0. 0.75 over 14, right? So 0. 0.75 divided by 14, right? Equal to what? Equal to a 0. 0.053 five right or six right so that's equal to what five percent right in the answer right for these questions right so i know these questions may be not very you know easy because what happened because you know here right dividends are what are uh, just paid right it's not a uh, future dividends right so you cannot put this number directly into the numerators right you must put times what one plus g and so means there are two places have the G. So that's why these problems are more difficult than the other questions to, to solve. Okay, so you must separate the G terms on one side. Okay, then you can solve what solve the G. Use the number part right, over you know this scalar before the G. So that's for these questions, right? And also I received an email from Stephanie about a questions where right? she has, but she don't copy the whole questions, right? only a few numbers. Right? So I'm not sure what exactly she asking for. So I design the questions right, for you guys. So here, right? for example, you know, a company issue a, what? a common stock, right? the required weight of return for this stock. I can see the cost of FT, right? The cost of FTs is equal to what? Equal to the uh, twelve percent. And then you also know the beta, right? Beta for this company, right? The non diversified risk, right? Equal to what? Equal to the one point five. And also, you know the market return, right? Equal to the 5%. So what do you want to solve? You want to solve what's the risk-free rate, for example, right? How to solve risk-free rate? And you see our, what? Cost of equities, right? And you see the beta. So we will use what? We will use the CAPM models, right? Capital asset pricing models. So we have the cost of the equity, 12%, right? Must equal to what? Risk-free rate, RF, right? Plus the beta, 1.5. 1.5, right? Times by what? RM minus what? RF. RM is already given, right? So that's equal to the 5%, right? So what's the RF? Let's solve this one. You say these questions also has the RF into the two place. You want to, you know, combine these two terms right, with the common factors, right? So let's say how to solve it. 12% equal to the RF plus the 1.5 times the 5%, right? Equal to what? 7.5%, right? Minus 1.5 what? RF, right? And you can see, we can move the numbers into one side, right? leave the terms with the RF into the other side. Right? So these two will be in one side, and these two will be in the other side. Right? So we put this one to here. 12 minus 7.5 equal to what? Will be equal to the 4.5%. And one RF minus 1.5 RF right? equal to what? Equal to the minus 0.5%. R, F, 
right? So what's the RF? RF equal to the 4.5 over minus 0 0.5, right? Equal to what? Equal to the minus 9%. Minus nine percent. So you may question, right? Why the RF can be negative? It is possible because what? Because we know all the returns you see in the questions are what? Nominal return, right? Nominal returns. The nominal return equal to a real rate plus what? Inflation rate, right? So if our country has a high what? Deflation, right? Deflation, right? Then they can have a uh, what? They can have a negative what? Risk free rate, right? But the case is very real, right? But it can be possible right, in a real reality, right? If some country experience a high deflation, that means inflation is a negative, right? Then they have a possible what? Negative what? Risk free rate, right? If they have a low interest rate. But with a high deflation, right? This risk free rate can be what can be negative. And so that's how to solve risk free rate, right? Use our CPM model. Right. So you see for these questions, you need to first write down the formula, right? Then you need to put the numbers into each variables, right? And say which one you need to solve, right? Then you can use your you know, calculations right, to solve it. When you solve the questions, I right, put the common factor terms right, into one side, right? Number into the other side, that right, you can solve the, you know, the variables, right, exactly. Right? So that's the questions for the CPM model and cost of equity. Now let's open some thing for the final review, right? I know we already finished all the chapters, right? So it's the time for us right, to do something right, for the final review. So let me open it, right? So let me open it. So the screen I'm share, uh, sharing with you now, right, is the final exam, right, last semester, right. So I hope this one can give you some, you know, ideas about right, how the final will look like. So last year's final exams will be taken in the, in class, right. So there are you know some instructions before the student take the test, right. You can see the formula here, right, for the final test, are uh, including what. Uh, including uh, you know our dividend growth models right our dividend growth model and also you see the cost of what cost of the equities right cost of equities and if you cannot see the screen sharing right so please let me know right so I can you know double check my screen sharing with you right so you can see we have the Cost of equities right, equal to the D1 over P0 plus what? Plus the growth rate, right? And uh, be careful if you see the dividend uh, just paid, then you need to use the D0 times 1 plus G over what? Over the P0. And you can see this part plus the growth rate will be equal to what? The cost of what? Equities, right? So while you do these calculations, make sure. And you follow the sequence, right? You will solve the ratio first, then the whole ratio afterward, right? You will plus the G. So G is not in the numerator, right? In the last semester, I see some students, right? Do these questions by putting the G in the top in the ratios, right? Then he will solve the answer wrong, right? So please don't add in the G into the top of the calculators, right? This should be the whole ratio plus the what plus the G, right? So that's for the cost of equities, right? This is from our dividend growth model, right? To solve R. Next formula is for what? For the CPM model, right? Capital asset 
pricing model, right? So you can see the cost of equities, right? Have the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium minus what? Risk-free rate. So you can see this one, if you see the beta in the questions, most likely you will apply what? Capital asset pricing model, right? And also pay attention in the question, right? In the question, it is given the market risk return, or it is, it is given what? Market risk premium. These two are different terms, right? You know for the market risk return, right? It is what? It is the, it is the RM, right? It is RM. And for the market risk, risk premium, it is what? RM minus what? RF. So if the questions give you what? Market risk premium, you are not need to what? Minus risk free rate. However, if the questions give you market risk return, then what you will see in the question, I must to what? Minus risk free rate before you apply what? apply these whole formulas, right? So you, you must to pay attention to the word return or premium right, in the question. Last questions on the final exam, right? Formula sheet is the comprehensive formula for what? For the weighted average cost of capital, right? So we have the weight of the equity times the cost of equity, right? Plus the weight of the debt times the cost of debt after tax. Right, so be be careful, right? So for the debt, you have a benefits right to avoiding avoiding the tax payment. Right, so that's why you have what times one minus t. Okay, so let's see the uh, questions. Let's right? see the questions. So in the uh, last, you know, semesters final, there are there are also questions in the short answers, right? So in this test, right, this uh, matters, right, our questions will be in a, in a multiple choice, right? But I will give you uh, two actual questions, right, for what, for problem solving, right? But it's not included in a total grade, right? But you can do that one for actual credits, right? So let's say the questions looks like, for example, the first one is for what? For the definition of what? That dividend growth model, right? Or called called what? Called Gordon model. Right? So Gordon models has several assumptions, right? First, dividend will be gross with a fixed rate right, forever. Next, next what? Next, you see the return must be higher than what? Growth rate. So these formulas have some limits, man. Right? Only the company pay dividends and also dividends are growing with constant rate. You can apply this formula. If not, right, you cannot apply this formula. The dividend growth model can be used to compute our what? Stock price at any point of time. This one is correct because you see the PT at any time right, can be solved as what? D t plus one over r minus g right so you see if you know the dividend paid in the next period and right, not just the period in time one can be any period right just the next one right you can solve the price one period what before right so that's the formula so this formula is, can be generalized right into solving the price for any point of time and also you can see the other choice. The dividend growth model assume dividends increasing at a constant rate forever, right? This one is also, that's the required assumption for this formula. So this one's correct, right? This one's also correct. How about the other one? Dividend growth model can be used to value zero growth stock. If the growth is zero, right? Means the P zero equal to what? D over R, right? So this is, actually for perpetuity form formula, right? So our preferred stock is use this formula, right? And you know, this is actually one special version of this formula when the G equal to what? zero, right? So this one's also correct, right? Last one, the formula requires the growth rate 
to be less than the required rate of return, right? This one we mentioned, right? When we mentioned these assumptions for this formula, we actually emphasize this one several times, right? The G must be less than R. If not, this price you solve will be negative, right? So G must be less than R and also not close to R. If R and G is very close, right? You will get a huge numbers right? by taking a small number inverse, right? So the R must be bigger than G and they will be not close. So that's one of these questions, right? All the four statements are correct, right? So we will choose we will choose the E. Next one, right? Next one is from the capital budgeting right, chapters. So you are considered two independent projects, right? These two projects are given these two columns of cash flows. Required rate of return for both projects is what? 16%. Given this information, which one of the following statement is correct? So for the two independent project, you can only choose one between these two. We call it a mutually exclusive project. So you can solve the NPV and what IRR. However, if these two are what are contradict, right? They are not consistent with the decisions, right? Then you must follow what NPV indicators, right? So NPV will dominate the other, you know, indicators, right? When you're choosing this project. You must always follow NPV method, right? So for these questions, we actually need to solve what NPV of these two cash flows. For NPV, you can use NPV functions in Excel, right? I mean, these methods is very special, right? Because of the pandemic of the coronavirus, right? We can stay at home to take a test. So you can use your Excel sheet right, on your computer to do these calculations, right? So first, you will put our NPV functions, right? Then choose what? 16%. That's the discount rate. Then you will select these cash flows, right? Be careful for NPV functions on Excel sheet. You can only choose the cash flow from one to three, right? So this one will into the bracket. After you apply these functions, you will after afterwards you will plus what? You will plus initial cost. So Minus minus one to five thousand. So that's for how to solve NPV for the project A. Same thing for the project B, right? You will also do the same way, right? So but you need to you know select the cash flow from one to three of the B, right? Into what into the bracket here, right? And uh, then minus initial cost. 135,000, right? Then based on the value you solve for the two project, which one has a higher NPV, you should choose that. If IR give you the same, you know, decisions, right? Then you will choose the E. If they are not consistent, right? You will most likely based on what NPV from NPV's value, right? To decide which one is better. And for NPV, right? They should be also what should be also positive, right? If the two, one project has ne native NPV, that means they should be what should be uh, rejected, right? NPV must be positive. Second, IRR internal rate of return is the break even return, right? For the projects with NPV to zero, so it is a minimal return. Right, to get NPV to zero. So IR must be more than what? Cost of what? Capitals, right? So you can say that's 16%, right? So our break even rate must be more than, you know, cost of capital, right? Requirement of return, that's 16%, right? So this is also an important indicator, right? If you say any project with the IR less than what? 16%, right? So it will be also rejected. Next question is, right? If our firm accept a project A, it will not be possible, feasible to also accept project B, right? So these two projects 
cannot be accepted at the same time because the both project will require the simultaneous and exclusive use of the same piece of what machinery right so they use the same capitals right so these projects are called what mutually exclusive one of these two can be selected the other one will be what will be rejected and right? you can only choose one either or right not both right so this is called a mutually exclusive project i think you already defined this one right in your capital budgeting project and right? so this is just a question to review this word concept right The free motion enterprise paid 2.2 per share annual dividend last week. Dividend are expected to increase by 3.75% annually. What is the one share of this stock worth to, to you today if your required rate of return is 15%? So if you want to solve the price, right, you know the price formulas for the stock. If you have a dividend, will be the D1 over R minus G, right? And here you can see the dividend are what? Are paid last week, right? So that means the D0, not D1, right? D0 should times what? One plus G, the over what? R minus G, right? What's the D0? D0 is a $2.2 .2 per share, right? times the gross one plus gross rate and gross rate is what one plus three point seventy five percent required rate of returns what fifteen percent right minus what three point seventy five percent right so you can see that's how we solve the what the price of what stock right just be careful right you will see the questions give you the dividend just paid and right? all the dividends will be paid in the next week right if this one the pay will be paid in the next week right then we will not use this one right we will use directly this formula here right will be 2.2 .2 over what 15 minus 3.75 percent and so if you change the word here right the calculations will be different So what are distribution of the you know to the shareholders by corporation call? For shareholders, we pay what? We pay dividend, right? We pay dividends, right? For the bond, we pay the coupon, right? So you can see how we allocate our net income, right, to our shareholders, right? We use our residual income, right? And the part of residual income will be paid in what? In dividends, right? In dividends. One agent who maintain the inventory from which he and she will sell and buy securities by called called um, dealer, right? Because the dealers were holding the inventory first before he will sell and buy what these securities. Right? For the brokers, right, they only would only match the price, right, without holding the inventory themselves right they only match the price between the buyer and sellers right so they only match the price right they don't you know buy the asset themselves right it's called broker how broker how they make profit they will you know try to match the price to help you know investors to realize the transaction sooner and quickly, right? So they will charge our what? Commission, right? But for a dealer, themselves will buy and, you know, sell the securities, right, in their account. And so they will what? They will buy low and what? Sell high. The price difference will be their profit, right? So they have our what? They have a, you know, return, right, from the price difference they do the transactions right so you can see the broker and dealers are different right in our financial 
markets. And also even for the property markets, right? Same thing. If you meet a broker, right? Means the broker, they also have the house, right? In their what in their listings, right? It's actually use their money to buy the house first and sell to the other investors, right? But for the um broker, right? Brokers only you know match the price. Dealers were holding what holding the property right, themselves. So that's the difference. Uh, next one, right? Next one, we try to find out, right? Which following are examples for diversifiable risk? So which means a diversifiable, right? Means something is, is what? It's very special. It's only specific to your what? To your company, to your industry, into your sector only. It's not for the whole market, right? If it is for the whole market, it's for the whole system, right? Will be non diversified risk, right? Will be systematic risk, right? But here you can see this one can be diversified out if you put in, you know, multiple sectors, right, into one portfolio. So this one should be very special, very specific, right, to one sector only. So let's say, you know, the following statement, right? The first one, earthquake damages, right, the Intel town, right? If you are not sure this one, we can read in all the four statements together, right? The next one, federal government impose a hundred fee right, to all business sectors. Right? You see here, right? You will see the word all, and you will see the word federal. So this one is not for regional, right? It's for the national level, right? For the whole our central office, by right? federal federal government, right? They will post hundred dollars for all the business entities, right? So this one is what. This is a uh, systematic risk. Systematic, right? Is for the whole market, right? It's, it's what? Non diversified, right? Non diversified. Right? Even you are in a, you know, good company, right? Good setters, right? But this one is, is for all. That's no exception, right? So this one should be not a diversifiable risk, right? Next one employment tax increase, what? Nationally, right? Nationally means what? For the whole country, and right? that's no exception. Right? So this one is also what? It is not a diversified risk, right? Even you increase, you know, the stock into a portfolio. However, you know the tax will be applied to all the what? All the companies, right? The national level, right? So this one's you cannot diversify out. So we already canceled these two. Means you know. Remain the choice to be correct, right? Let's say these two in more details, right? First one you can say here. You see, well, let me change the color of my, uh, you know, marks, right? But I think it's not working, right? Let me just use the black color. Let me check, can I use different color? Okay, you can see here, right? Earthquake damage wood, Intel town but not the whole country, right? only a small region. If you also have the stock or investment in the other region, right? for example, if the earthquake damaged the whole town in California, however, if you also invite in a business right? in a New York right? or in a Pennsylvania, right? you will not you know, have this risk, totally you know, will be take over your return, right? Because this one's only a small portion of your what your investment. Right? So this one can be what can be diversified out, right? If you have the allocation of the money into the what in the, into a different region. And right? so this one is what is a diversified risk. Right? Next one, toy makers right are required to improve their safety demand. Safety standards, right? You can see it is for the toy makers, right? Not for all the companies, right? Only for the toy maker industry. And right? so this one can also what diversified out, right? By putting the other, you know, sectors, right? Putting the financial or non-manufacturer or not a toy maker industries, you know, stock into a portfolios, right? So these two can be what diversified out.
Next one, right? You see, Steve has invested in the 12 different stocks. The total value for these 12 stocks are what? 121,000, right? $300. 15% of this total investment, right? Will be in a wealth man food. So what's the meaning of this 15%? Means the 15% is the part or proportion of this what? This amount, right? Inviting in what? In this company, right? So this one called what? Called portfolios what? Weight, right? How much percentage of your money are allocated right, to a specific company right, called a portfolio weight? Next one, which are one of the following is the formula? Explain what? The connection between expected return and the level of what? Systematic risk. And sentiment risk is measured by what? By the beta, right? So what's the beta's formula for expected return? It's the CAPM model, right? RF plus the beta times what? RM minus RF, right? So this one is the capital asset pricing model, also called what? Security market land models, right? These two are equivalent, right? Because this one is visualized, right? With the beta as the horizontal axis, right? returns a vertical axis. So this curve called a security market line. Right? And we know our X axis right, is the beta. Right? It's the beta, right? Vertical is R. So we have the risk-free rate is actually the dot when the beta equal to what? Zero, right? So RF plus the beta times what? RM minus RF, right? So our slope, Right, slope is what Rm minus Rf. Right, so this curve is our you know capital asset pricing model. So these two are what equivalent. Next one, we have the primary market. We also have what? We have the secondary market. What's the primary market? The primary market means the uh, you know, the company selling a new stock, right, into the market. New stock, right? New stock means what? IPO, initial public offering. So the stock is directly from the company to what? To the public. Once the stock are trading in the market, right, and you can buy directly from the other investors, but not from the company anymore, right? So this one called what? Called a secondary market, right? So which choice is correct? So this is for the stock, right? And you can see here, right? It must be the shares, right? All selling shares are what? Reserved, right? It's not a new stock, but you know, all stock are reserved between the investors, right? So that's the choice word, D, right? You can see the E is for what? Warrants, not for stock, this one's wrong. Right, and also the others, right? The market is dominated by what? By dealers. It's by the you know by the traders itself, right? It's not for dealers. Right? Dealers will you know actually make the market right when the market lost the liquidity. But our you know secondary market with a high liquidity, right? You can see the New York Stock Exchange, right? The price are moving every day, right? So this one's not right, right? How about B? The market conducted solely by the brokers, right? It's also not right, right? Actually, the market including, you know, institutions, right? Individuals, right? Dealers, brokers, right? So many different type of what investors, right? So these two are both not right. The first one, market in which subordinated shares, not subordinated, right? Just the regular outstanding shares, right? Are issued, not right. But right? issue means the new stock, right? Reserve is correct, right? But these two is not right, right? So the only choice correct is what? D, right? D choice. So that's the D choice will be the correct answer, right? For this one, the Stephanie answer is one correct, right? It's D. Okay, so let's follow the first 10 questions, right? We will not continue the questions, right? For this uh, class, right? We will continue the question, right? Next time. 
let's also do some you know problem solving like questions together so let's say uh, one question is forward for the capital budgeting process and so I know you are very familiar with this one and especially we do this one in, in our project and so let's say how to measure measure these indicators right first one is the pay by period and we will see how soon right, your, your initial cost will be will be covered right so five thousand dollars is the initial cost right and after one year after one year, right, your balance will be what will be two thousand dollars left, right, on the balance, right, and after seven years, right, after seven years, you can see it will become what zero. So your payback period will be what two years, right. Now we will see the question forward for discounted what payback period, right? This discounted payback period. You need to first actually convert the value here right into what to the discounted values, right? So we need to convert our cash flows right from one zero to three. Zero one two three, right? This is time, right? Time t right one two three, right? Cash flow minus five thousand. 3,000, right, 2,000, and 2,000, right? So before you solve the payback period, right, for discounted payback period, first you want to discount this cash flow to what, to time zero, right, use our discounting factor, what, 10%, right? So our DCF, this one will be what, will be still the same thing, right, because this is on time zero. For this one, you must what, divide by one plus what, 10%. Right, then this one will divide by one plus ten percent square, right? Last one will be one plus ten percent what cubic, right? So first you will solve the discounted cash flow. Now you will add in this cash flow one by one to see on what time, right? Your initial cost will be recovered, right? If you still have a proportion of the balance left on the last year, right? So you need to take a ratio right, to see the decimal. Right, for your pay, discounted payment period, right? We solve this one in our project, right? So we will not, you know, go to detail, right? For this calculation here, right? Same thing for MPV and IR, right? MPV you can use what use our Excel, right? Or use our, you know, cash flow key on your financial calculators, right? So first you will press and say F key. Before you press F key, or after you press F key, you can clear your memory right, by tap what. Second, right, and uh, clear what? Clear the work, right? Clear the work, right? So you need to make sure you will clear the uh, numbers first, right? By press save key and press these two. After you clear the work, you will input the cash flow, right? One by one, right? So for example, 5,000 minus, that's a sale, uh, that's save zero, right? And the CF1, right, the cash flow on time one, 300, uh, 3,000, right? And CF2 is what? 2,000. And this one is duplicate, right? If you want to save your time, just put uh, what? FO2 equal to what? 2, right? So it means you have the 2 word, 2, 2,000, right? After you finish the input, right, you will press NPV, right? NPV, then you put the cost of the return as what discount rate, right? So I equal to the 10%, right? 10, then what? Press enter, right? And goes down, right? To press CPT, right? To solve MPV. Or you can use our Excel sheet, right? To solve it, right? Whatever method you use, right? Make sure you solve this one correctly, right? And once you finish this input, right? You don't need to clear your memory now, right? You will continue press what? IRR to solve what? Internal rate of return. And in your Excel sheet, right, you will just use the IR function directly, okay? And for the profitability index, you can base on this part, right, to do the calculations, right? You add in all what? All discounted positive cash flows, 
right? Then divide by what? Initial cost will be the probability index, right? Probability index, PI. So that's the calculations for the chapter, for the cost of the, you know, for the capital budgeting, right? So if you have any questions, right, so let me know right, for this part.